If you came and you brought your Bible with you, you could go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2 is where we'll be uh, this afternoon. And, uh, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 20 is, is where we're going to be. That's the text. And we're going to focus on verses 8 through 20. Um, but hey, guys, if you don't have your Bible with you, if you're not using your phone, you want to track with us, I'd like to call our ushers forward. They can help you by giving you a free copy of the CSB Bible. That's the uh, translation I have. It's a really good translation. Uh, so if you need a Bible, just raise your hand. It's our gift to you. We want to bless you with it. If you're like, hey, I got plenty of Bibles. I just need one for right now. You can go and put it on the welcome table on your way out. Uh, but th it's a nice Bible. You can have it taken home with you. Uh, just go ahead and just get your hand up. And Joe, uh, Joe's the man. Joe will help you uh, by getting you a Bible. All right. So Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Verses 1 through 20. And some of you guys, as you're turning to this, you know, we, when we think about Christmas, we all think about, you know, one of the biggest parts of the Christmas season, besides cookies and family and all that stuff, is buying presents. And it's, it's going and accumulating these presents to give to our little ones. And it's also our little ones getting excited for Santa to bring presents as well. But we understand that presents are a symbol. The reason why we give during this season is because of the gift that God gave us in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to read to you about that gift, this amazing gift that God gave us. So chapter 2, verse 1 says this. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole empire should be registered. This is the first registration that took place during Cornelius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own home. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family line of David, to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. Then she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him tightly in cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. In the same region, shepherds were staying out in the fields, keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid. Look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be there for all people. Today in the city of David, a Savior was born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly there was a multitude of heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to the God in the highest. Peace on earth to the people he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off, and they found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. After seeing them, they reported the message that were told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring all these things up in her heart and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had seen and heard, which were just as they had been told. So guys, the other day I was, I was, uh, I was watching this documentary. I kind of do that from time to time. You can ask Jen, I'm a nerd. Uh, I like to watch documentaries. And it was talking about this movie. And, and I, won't, I won't put the movie out there for you, but there was a movie where the director insisted that the beginning of the movie would say, based on true events, even though the whole thing is made up. And people thought, because it seemed very like, like, like this would happen, that this story was based on true events. And even the actors would say, that's not right. Like, we know this is fiction. We shouldn't tell people this is based on true events. And the directors were like, no, we want people to believe that. And even until I watched this documentary, I thought the movie was based on true events. And it was just a crazy movie. I'm like, I can't believe that happened in that place. And when we read this story, sometimes... It seems so fantastic, right? 
I mean, let me ask you guys this. We got any, we got any uh, dairy farmers or son of dairy farmers or any farmers out there, anyone who, who goes out in the fields from time to time, out in the country from time to time? We've got a few of us, right? And as you're out there, have you ever, when you're taking care of the cows, you're trying to get that old Jersey cow or actually that brown Swiss, I hear they're pretty, they're pretty ornery, right? They'd be kind of stubborn. You're trying to get it to move. And as you're trying to get the move and you're doing everything you've got to do to try to get the move, don't worry, I grew up with beef cattle, so I understand. And you're losing your cool. Have you ever had an angel pop up and say, I got, I got something to tell you? And as he's telling you this amazing thing, have you ever had a multitude of angels? Now, this multitude is an angelic host. And here's what's so crazy about this angelic host. Host means army. So we're not talking about angels that are like in gowns, you know, like as you would think are little baby cherubs, you know, like the little babies, you know, with the little wings. We're not talking about that. We're talking about God's angelic army. And they just start singing this choir of multitude beyond measure of angels. So imagine you're out trying to get that brown Swiss to move and that's what you encounter. And it's not just you, it's you and everyone else. It's a whole group of you that see this. It's an amazing thing. It's incredible. But you know, like you and, you and your buddies or you and your family or whoever's helping you, if you're like, you know what, if I kind of told my friends about this, if I, if I went to church on Sunday, said something to the pastor, if I, if I just decided to go and let, let my, my wife know when I went back into the house and said, it's cold out there, and guess what? I encountered the angel of the Lord, and he told me. Or, hey, I encountered this angelic host. Some people might think we need, you need to go see somebody. You might have to go see a doctor. You might have, there might be, you might be have too much stress. You just have too much stress in your life. That's probably what happened. But that's what happened with these shepherds. And not only that, we're talking about dairy farmers, and, and we, we hold dairy farmers up and farming up. In Jesus' day, in the, in the day of this story, shepherds were like the lowest of the low. They were the guys who couldn't get a job doing anything else. So they just got pushed out to the fields. Or they were the youngest sibling. And all the older siblings took all the good jobs in the household. And the younger sibling was like, well, I guess we got to put them out in the field. In the Old Testament, King David was that younger sibling. Everyone else had jobs around the farmstead, and they said, just send David out. We don't, you know, he's the youngest. He, he won't like him anyway. And to send him out to be with the shepherd and to be a shepherd and take care of the sheep. Those were the shepherds. So here's this kind of lower rung in society at that time. Taking care of the sheep, and sheep are ornery just like brown Swiss, and they're trying to get them to go, and they have this encounter. And if they were to go tell everybody this is what happened without checking first, it might, they might have that same feeling I had when I saw this documentary about this movie based on true events. You just might have some doubt. How could this be good news and great joy, with great joy? How could this be true? This is crazy. So what I love about these shepherds is they didn't just hear, see this crazy thing and go, wow, well, Guys, let's, let's phone it in. We just had us a, just an amazing time. This is crazy. Let's just keep it to ourselves or let's go tell everybody. No, they decide, let's go. They needed to go. They needed to go see. So this is what it says in verse 15. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what happened, which the Lord made known to us. And they take off. They hurry off and they find Mary and Joseph and this baby exactly the way the angel of the Lord told them. This story is based on true events. So when the angel speaks to them and gives them this, this, this greeting of what, what this message is and what this baby lying in tightly wrapped in a manger means, this amazing gift that God has given us, this is what he says, I pro proclaim to you good news of great joy. That will be for all the people. All the people have this opportunity to know this truth that you now are hearing and have the ability to see today. It's good news. It's gospel. 
If you don't know what gospel means, gospel means good news. It's, that's the transliteration from the Greek of good news. This word right here, good news, is gospel. Let me proclaim the gospel of great joy to you today. That there's a baby born for you, for me, for all the people. He'll give us great joy. And when the shepherds hear this, they have to go find out if, it's, if this is real. I'm going to tell you right now, here's what's so amazing about the Christmas story is it's absolutely real. So when we talk about how can we say it's good news of great joy for us, it's because it's the truth. It's real. It's based on true events. It happened. Historically, spiritually, we can see through history that this is real. That's why you're sitting in this seat today. If you're sitting in this seat today because it's tradition, hey, your little one was singing tonight, or hey, you're just like, it's kind of warm in there. Let's just, let's just go in and get some cookies and hot cocoa. I heard about that on Facebook. Or someone's like, you got to come with me. And you're like, I don't really want to. Whatever reason you're in here today, hear this. The real reason you're sitting here today is that you have the opportunity, if you don't know it already, to receive and to know this great joy of Jesus. And not only that, but you now have the opportunity because you know it, you've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, that this is truth. You have this relationship with Jesus, then now you get to be the one that goes and brings this truth to others. See, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, this gift of Jesus, it's just a reminder of what we get every day and every moment. That great joy through the gospel is available to us now and every, and every day and forever. It's available to us when we mourn. It's available to us when we're, when we're glad, when we're sad, when we're hungry, when we're full. It's available to us every moment, every occasion. This great joy of the good news of Jesus, that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son so that we should not perish but have everlasting life. That's good news. That's good news that gives us great joy. And we get to become like the shepherds, those who run and tell everybody about what we've seen. One of the things here at Redemption Church that we talk about, that we want you to know Jesus personally, grow in your relationship with him, and then show him to others. How amazing it is, is it that you can know the Son of God? You can know the good news and the great joy that he has for you. You can experience it, just like the shepherds did with, with the angels and everything else. Although they had this fantastic thing, you get to have this personal thing. They, get, they got to see a multitude of angels, and you get to have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. They had to run to Bethlehem to see a baby in a manger, and to rejoice, you get to pray and praise and worship and open God's word and be in community. And in your darkest and in your brightest, God is always there. We are a blessed people. You are blessed. I am blessed. Because we are the people of the good news of great joy. The people that the angel said, this good news that brings great joy for all the people. You are that, those people. I am part of that group. You are part of that group. And there are others who need to be a part of that group. And we get to be like the shepherds to run and tell the story. And it's based on true events. It's the truth. And I love what Jesus says. Jesus called himself the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Anyone who comes, wants to come to the Father has to come through me. He also went on to say that if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. Guys, when we celebrate Christmas, we celebrate that fact, that truth, that we have been set free by Jesus, that we 
get to know the Father and have eternal life through Jesus. That we get to know the Father through Jesus. And not only that, but we get to have the great joy and privilege of having a relationship with him and then being able to do what he's called us to do in the places he's called us to do it. By his power, by his grace, by his word. So I want to encourage you here on Christmas 2022, take some time. Maybe it's after uh, everything settles tonight. The kids or grandkids are in bed. Maybe it's tomorrow morning when you're drinking your coffee, eating your pancakes and seeing the presents get all ripped up. Or maybe it's on the drive home, whatever it is. Take some time and reflect on this truth and ask yourself, Ask yourself this question. Am I like the shepherds? Am I taking this great joy with me and running and letting others know? Or am am I keeping it to myself? If you're the latter, thank God for grace. I, I sometimes run in the ladders myself. Even as a pastor, I'm just like, you know, I'm just tired today. Figure it out. Here's the deal. He has it all figured out for us through Jesus. And that's the gift that we get to have. So I want to encourage you. Spend some time. Take a moment. Give God the glory for this gift that we have in Christ. And then ask him to make you like the shepherds. Proclaiming this good news of great joy to wherever you go. Let me pray for you.